As you may have heard, right now it appears that the United States Postal Service is deliberately under attack. The USPS is not just about mail delivery, and the uncertainty surrounding its future is a social justice issue. The majority of USPS employees are people of color. The USPS is a lifeline for rural communities that otherwise do not have access to deliveries from larger private delivery companies. The USPS also provides affordable delivery pre prescriptions that have been deeply necessary for folks during the pandemic, especially if they have compromised immune systems or are elderly, and as a result, cannot travel outside to get their prescriptions in person at this time. Post offices are also not just used for mailing letters. They also provide access to government services, such as passports. In communities that do not have access to banks, or if individuals do not have bank accounts, post offices allow access to secure money orders to transfer funds or make payments. And of course, during a pandemic, the USPS has the ability to provide safe and secure voting with vote by mail in what will probably be the most important election of our lives and the history of the United States. What can you do to support the USPS right now? Call and or write to your senators to tell them to support stimulus funding for the USPS. They haven't been included in any of the stimulus packages yet. And consider buying some stamps. I bought these sweet Hot Wheels and T-Rex ones. My mom bought the Earth Day and American Gardens ones. While the merch store is cool, funds generated by selling stamps are guaranteed to go directly back into the Postal Service. Well, it's certainly been a minute. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this Put Say DIY, and you know, we're all, all of us, together, are, are dealing with some level of uncertainty right now uh, in these trying times. Uh, and for me personally, for the past month, really longer than a month, but it really all came to a, a scary head um, the past month, I had an extra spicy, extra large heaping helping of uncertainty uh, that just <laughs> was unbearable. It was so taxing on me mentally that I just decided that I wasn't even going to attempt to make a video uh, just to kind of conserve energy because uh, there are still things I have to, uh, you know, achieve on a daily basis and so just so I could get through what I absolutely had to get through, uh, I just kind of made that decision. But things are better now. Rainbows and unicorns fill the air. Uh, and so I'm, I'm back, for better or worse. And I'm fine. Everything's fine. It, it all worked out. It, it kind of had this weird, like, comic book movie heroic ending which my life doesn't normally go that way, so that was, that was pretty cool. But now that all leads us to the topic of this video. Maker Fair Miami! You know, right now with COVID continuing to fill the air, literally um, all responsible events are being held virtual and Maker Fairs are no different. So this weekend, that's August 14th to 16th, 2020, uh, there's gonna be the virtual Miami Maker Fair and I was asked to give a talk. Uh, I know, I was I was surprised too. Uh, and so, you know, Mario, the guy who was organizing it, uh, you know, he said, you can talk about what project you want. I said, you know what? The xylophone, the robot xylophone, it has to be, right? It has to be. And you know, that kind of brings to my motivations of participating in this and talking about the xylophone are also a little bit lazy, I have to admit. But as I just said, I've been conserving energies. Um, I promised I didn't forget to do a follow-up video that would go into deep dive on all the technical things happening with the xylophone and by doing a talk on the xylophone for Maker Faire Miami virtual, I'm not going to Miami, um, <laughs> uh, the, I, I can do that. I can do a deep dive and so you can either participate live in the Q&A or you can watch a recording after. Everybody wins. I have a topic to talk about. You get the information. It's, it's all good. And I get to be a little lazy. So this talk on the xylophone is going to be Saturday. That's August 15th, 2020 at 2 p.m. Saturday at 2 p.m. You know, I think that's a nice slot. I'm pretty happy with that slot. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a link to register. I'll throw that down in the description, uh, and you'll you can when you're on the link, you'll there'll be like a Q and A thing happening. I'll be talking. Um, I yeah, it'll be a good time. 
And as I said, I hope there's also like a recording, either that they do or maybe I'll be able to record it. Uh, so then we can put it up on this channel or it'll be available on another channel. Um, at any time there's a talk like that, I always really prefer when it's there's a recording too because you know people have lives, uh, so they can't always participate live because they're living their lives. They can't be live. Now there's a lot of opinions on virtual things, you know, uh, especially conferences and stuff. Is it good? Is it bad? What's the point? What's the deal? What's the score? And I'm just going to give you my own personal opinion. Uh, I think they're amazing. Uh, and for, for one reason in particular, accessibility. Uh, when you put stuff like this online and open it up so that there's no cost barrier and people can also view it in their homes, uh, so many people can participate and view it who previously maybe never would have been able to for whatever reason that that is. Uh, and I think that's awesome. And it really, it, it whittles these events down to what they truly are. And that's just people sharing knowledge with others. It's education. Uh, and I know that there's a lot to be said for the in-person experience. And, you know, I've gone to events before, I've talked about it on here, and I, I'll say, as a 60-40 introvert, extrovert, uh, I sometimes the experience is, is overrated, you know? Um, what I walk away from with those events is, I remember the talks, and that's why I personally go, people are cool too, uh, but um, it's getting that the talk and the information and before I was able to go to things like that, which I really only was recently able to do that, uh, I always really, I'd hear these talks, and I'd hear about these talks, rather, and I'd, I'd see slides, but you'd never be, oftentimes they wouldn't be recorded, or they wouldn't get shared out, or you'd have to have been to the event and paid for a ticket to have access, so I'd never, I'd never hear the talks, and I'd be real bummed. Uh, so I think that the fact that right now, everything's just opened up and you can hear these uh, talks and information and just access stuff that otherwise would have had a gates um, in front of them, whether it be distance or financial or just straight up like physical access. Like, I just think it's amazing. I think it's really cool. And I hope that that's one positive thing that can come out of this uh, pandemic is uh, just increased accessibility for events like this and knowledge. And that has been your feel-good moment on this episode of Blitz City DIY. So, Maker Fair Miami, this weekend, that's August 14th through the 16th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in this year of our tragedy, 2020. I'll have all the links down in the description so you can sign up if you're interested, take in some sights, some sounds. Zoom. Now, while I wasn't making videos, I was still making projects, and uh, I wrote code for a couple Adafruit things. I made this shelf. Good sturdy shelf. It's nice. It's solid plywood. And it's really, it's a shelf made for the xylophone. Uh, so I'll probably do like a catch-up video soon where it's like things I've been working on, like that other one I did a while ago where I was also had been feeling overwhelmed before that, but I didn't want to say that, but that that's what had been happening. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be coming. Uh, I've also been uh, doing some pocket operator synth jams. You probably can't see it with the shelf. See, see these things? Um, and I've been posting those up on Diode Zone uh, and every Sunday. That's been fun. I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I'll push them on YouTube. I, I kind of like them on Diode Zones because it's a cool place to go, and the, I like my my synthy things to be kind of in a nice little safe little area, and that's that's what Diode Zone feels like to me as far as videos go. So yeah, you know, basically the in summary, the world continued to turn. I continued to live, uh, and that's going to do it for this video. Uh, coming out more regularly now going forward now that the sky is not falling on me um at least for now i mean there's always next week but anyway uh thank you for watching uh, i hope you're doing well in these trying times uh and until next time which is a man-made construct this has been <laughs>